Are you a military veteran coming to the great state of Florida? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about all the top rated cities for veterans in the state of Florida. I'm going to give you a huge list. And I'm also my opinion of when I, my myself as a veteran went to go look at these cities. I went through a whole road trip, traveled to almost all of them exclusively trying to figure out where I wanted to settle my family after being out of the military. And I can tell you, it is a crazy one. And if you don't know where you want to be in the state of Florida, but you know as a military veteran that you are ready to come to this great state, well, then this is the video for you. And let's get into it. What's up, everyone? My name is Cameron Hodge, and I'm one of the two partners here on the channel. And our whole job is talking about moving to and living in the great state of Florida. We hop around so many different places. Every single inch of the state is covered by our team. And our whole goal is literally just helping you move to this state, especially if you are a military veteran. I don't care if you're PCSing to one of the many large bases in this state, or you are a veteran who is out of the service and you are here to move to this great state to get all the great benefits it has for you and your family. And if you are looking to get help in terms of real estate or where to live and how to get there this number popping up below is how you can get a hold of us you can call us email text it does not matter we are here to help you along that process from a to z being veterans ourselves and going through that process of relocation and moving to a state and i did it from across the country when i moved here and it was painful and i want to make sure that you do not have that experience in that process so reach out and let's have that conversation to get you here to this great state now in this video i'm going to talk about like some of the top places to if is there a military veteran in this state so i served five years in the marine corps and i was stationed in california for the majority of them that's where i met my wife and started our family but you know it just wasn't cutting out for us you know believe it or not you know growing up in a small town in new york state i was like this place is terrible and that's where we decided to move to florida and when you first go to look at florida you i, I don't know for me i got overwhelmed a little bit i didn't know where i wanted to live um, I knew I wanted to be in a good location. I was, you know, using VA healthcare, and I was like, okay, how can I make sure that you know my family's getting taken care of? But I also like, you know, we still have a place where I can get everything taken care of and still kind of move through that process. Well, I'm going to talk about all those situations now. If you're active duty military, just keep this list in mind because I'm sure the city that you're stationed in is going to come up. I actually I almost promise it because all the main military bases in this state are well. They're in the cities that are some of the top relocation for the state. Now, I got this entire list, and it's really in no ranking order because, like, keep in mind, like, while this list might generally just spark some ideas of where you could live in Florida, I want you to understand that every single city has its own pros, cons, and charm to it. And every single place is not for everyone. Heck, I've had clients who will reach out because they're living in like Cape Coral and they're like, Cameron, I'm moving to Orlando just like you because I, there's just no way I can go through this. Hey, I get it and that's okay. Let's kind of figure that out together. So we pulled this list right here. So we're gonna start at number 10. I have 10 cities here. Again, this is not in ranking order. This is just food for thought. I got this entire list from uh, the centersquare.com, but to be honest with you, I don't think there's a, is an order per se. It's just kind of, you have to go travel to these locations, see if it's best for you, or that's why me and the team do exist here. So number 10 is Clearwater. Now, the thing with this list is they, look, if you're looking at a map, you're gonna be like, Clearwater, where's that? Okay, so it's in Greater Tampa. Like, it, it's Tampa, <laughs> in my opinion. So there are two cities on here. Um, the other one's number five, which I actually do like the area. And I have a uh, uh, lender for our team actually lives there and, and absolutely loves it. But uh, Clearwater is amazing. It's actually, I think it's, it's always one of the top ranking beaches in the United States year over year, or at least most of the years in the last decade. And I, me and my family, we, we love, so obviously being in Orlando, we love to travel there all the time. You know, when it comes to living there, obviously it's gonna be a little bit pricier depending what you're trying to do. So that's one con. Like, obviously, when it comes to the United States, if you're living near the ocean, it's probably gonna be some of the more expensive depending on what coast. Obviously, California is crazy. Florida's not as bad as California, but it is expensive. Clearwater is one of those locations where, you know, it it's not too bad. But keep in mind that, you know, it's not gonna be the cheapest. And to be honest with you, Clearwater is a pretty small section, so it's weird that they just throw it in there like that. But it is one of those areas where if you like being next to the beach, it's in the greater Tampa area. I, I love Tampa as a city. To be honest with you, it's one of the cities that we were considering as our top one. Tampa actually, in 2022, I'm trying to get my years correct here, was one of the top relocation cities in Florida, and for good reason. I mean, obviously, you have major sports teams, you have amazing beaches, the people are awesome. To be honest with you, out of all the cities I've been to, it's not the worst when it comes to congestion. It's still a city but it's not that bad. 
but it is gonna be one of the pricier, one, pricier ones on the list. So keep that in mind when we're going through this because it is not as cheap as all of these other options. Now, number nine is Tallahassee. That is the capital of Florida. Tallahassee, look, I, when I drove through Tallahassee, so we did a giant road trip, road trip all the way from California to Florida. And look, Tallahassee is gonna be one of the more affordable cities on this list. But at the same time, they do have a large homeless population issue. The cost of living might be better, but depending what you're, what you're doing for work as a veteran, a lot of times I know veterans are very tired to the defense industry or contracting or technology and things like that, Tallahassee might be hit and miss in terms of finding employment. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to change or you can't find jobs there. That's not what I'm saying. It's just something I've noticed when, when I was making the move to Florida is, you know, kind of realizing what's going on with that. But, you know, overall, it's one of those places where it's not bad. It's more affordable. Um, I do know they have a growing homeless population, though. It is one of more of the... So North Florida and the... the borderline of Georgia is definitely one of the more uh, poverty areas of Florida, I think, at least when I'm going through there and seeing people. People are friendly. They're awesome. But it's, if you're looking for a big city and beaches, I mean, yeah, you, you're not like far drive from the beaches being in Tallahassee, but you know, it's take your pick. Now, if you're like me and you love to hunt, now there's fishing everywhere in the state of Florida, obviously. All these cities will satisfy your fishing needs. So hold your horses. But one of the things I missed growing up in the in country in New York is miss hunting. And the cool thing I think about Tallahassee is that if you want to be able to raise your boys, I got three boys, right? I got chaos. These boys need to learn what it's like to, to go hunting and, and to take a, a life of an animal, but appreciate the fact that they can do so. You know, Tallahassee's right there. I mean, hog hunting galore. You're on the border of Georgia. You know, you can you, deer hunting, turkey. You can do it all. Okay, you're on the border of Georgia. And that's one of the cool things I think I love about Tallahassee is it's a less of a drive to go to a lot of these locations, whether it's a private hunting camp or maybe you want to buy more land, things like that. That's one of the benefits, I think, of being in North Florida. But again, it's not so much the typical Florida vibe people think of, in my opinion, but it's one of those cities where if you do like that, then hey, I can think it'd be a great freaking fit. Now, number eight on this list is going to be Fort Lauderdale. Now, Fort Lauderdale is obviously just, it's pretty much, it's, it's just north of Miami, all right? And technically, it's kind of part of it, but Fort Lauderdale is, look, it, it's not the cheapest. In fact, we actually had a veteran who reached out to our team uh, last week, and, you know, they got a job, they're moving to the state, they're retiring from the military, and now they're in a position where, you know, they're looking at Fort Lauderdale because that's where the job is, but they're like, man, Cameron, it's just not in our budget. Actually, they were talking to Ed going through that process. And look, it was one of those things where it's like, it just wasn't in their budget. So they're having to go a little bit north of that city in order to get the location where it's like, it's a little more affordable. The downfall is like a 45 minute drive. Now he's okay with doing that to be able to you know support his family and stay within their budget. But it is, you know, Fort Lauderdale is, Fort Lauderdale is not the cheapest. But if you're looking for that Miami life or that whole section there, Fort Lauderdale, awesome. A lot going on. Obviously, it, it, you're not too far if you want to take cruises, things like that. So it's awesome. But obviously, we're on the coast, so hurricanes will be more effective of you. Now, you also remember Clearwater, same, same, same thing. It's on the Gulf Coast. Now, this one is going to be on the Atlantic. Now, moving on to Gainesville. So Gainesville is like almost smack dab. I don't know if it's considered smack dab in the middle of the state. It's a little bit north, right? So you got Tal... <laughs> you got this backwards. So you got, you got Jacksonville. You got... Um, Tallahassee and then down below you have Gainesville so Gainesville is a more affordable city it's not on the water so obviously if you're gonna want to go to the beach you're gonna be taking a drive no matter what direction you're going it's gonna be a several hour drive now Gainesville has I had a client uh, a year and a half ago who um, and obviously we have we help people in all the state more recently but he, he's a good example okay to where he worked for in the technology industry helping you know well i guess it's the medical industry helping with you know electron microscopes and things like that and he was blessed enough to where his company had a main office there because well he got lucky enough to get the job there and you know being a, a veteran himself he never used the va loan before it, the cool thing about gainesville is it's way more affordable than a lot of these other cities right again if you like hunting same thing applies the one thing I'll note in Gainesville is if you want to be close to the beaches and things like that or a huge downtown scene, I don't think it has it compared to all these other options. It's just not there, right? No sports teams. You're going to have to go to Jacksonville if you really want to get anything or drive all the way to Tampa, all right? But it's not a bad city. It has its crime and it has its bad areas like all these cities do. But 
Gainesville is more affordable. It gives you that outdoor feeling. I mean, he bought his house backing up to a nature preserve. Oh my God, ecstatic. I mean, I think every time I call him, he's, he's fixing up the house somehow, enjoying his life in the backyard, just absolutely loves that area. And he is just amazed by how like, peaceful he feels. Owning his home was, I think it was definitely under 300000 for that house. You know, it's a good three-bed, two-bath home. Now his son had a place to go, watch his father own something, fix it up. So look, Gainesville's awesome. For me, it's not for me. Again, you, you it's gonna be, no matter where you go on this list, especially if you're driving somewhere, you're going to be going through Gainesville at some point. So you really got to experience it. It's not the worst, but it depends on how you are as a person, what you like to do, what your family likes to do. You know, if it's a, if it's all budget, maybe it's an option. But again, it also comes down to employment and things like that. So it is a big city. It's definitely growing faster and faster as people move away from the coastlines of Florida to kind of find more affordable living, especially those that have been in Florida a long time. Now, coming up from Gainesville at number six is Pensacola. Now, I was in Pensacola for about a year going through training. That's about all I remember of Pensacola. I went out, I went off base a little bit. But man, they had this stupid rule for Marines on base. Like, I couldn't wear regular clothes, you know, civilian attire out in town. And I had to freaking wear, like, my, my dress uniform. <sighs> Gotta love the Marine Corps, right? Always creating stupid rules and obnoxious stuff. But I, I like Pensacola. <laughs> Definitely can seem redneckish sometimes, which I grew up where I grew up. I mean, it seems normal to me. But for some people, that, that might not be the fit for you. Obviously, you're on the coast. You're close to Alabama. It's on the panhandle. I remember when I was in Pensacola, when I was stationed there, they had like their their 50-year ice storm and the whole city shut down. And all of us from like the north were like, we can't get a cab, can't go anywhere. Everything's closed. It's just a little cold and ice. Like what the heck's going on here? It was really funny. Um, couldn't even order pizza, dang it. Oh my God. So the panhandle really gets cold sometimes. I guess it's like every 50 years, 30 years. I don't know what it is, but it gets cold sometimes. But Pensacola, I mean, I, I like it. I think it's very a small city by far. You know, I don't hate it. It's definitely growing in popularity a lot, though. Um, I think since I've been, I got stationed there in 2013, it's changed a lot. And, you know, it's one of those cities where I it's nostalgic when I go back. You know, you either... What's funny about Pensacola is people really either love it or hate it. Right now, being in Pensacola, you're very far from sports teams. Uh, again, hunting, fishing still applies. If you're in that North Panhandle, not going far to do it. Right, close to Alabama, but you know it's it's more affordable. It's not the best, but it's definitely more affordable. Um, the big thing with Pensacola to me is like you, you got to go there and experience it because you're, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. But it's a military town, so if your job involves around doing stuff on base or whatever, or maybe your business is like my our own, helping veterans you know, primarily, then, hey, that could be a great fit. You know, so don't don't knock it. I think people hate on Pensacola a lot more than they should. I've also had people who, you know, they go to Pensacola and they're like, wow, this place is way too country for me. You know, uh, you take it or leave it. It's like a city. I, I, there's still some city aspects to it, but it's not the, not the worst. Now, number five on our list is St. Petersburg. So we're heading back to the Tampa area. St. Petersburg is just an awesome area in the greater Tampa location. So St. Petersburg, again, not far from Clearwater. You're on the beach. Like it has a lot going for it. Again, it's going to be more expensive. It's not the most affordable place. Um, you know, our lender on the team had a condo right there for a long time in St. Petersburg, and he loved it. Like he just loves the location. Again, hurricanes come through. Now, hurricanes apparently haven't hit Tampa directly in a long time. Not saying, knock on wood, but. You have to be aware of that. You're going to be living on the Gulf Coast. But if you need to be near water every day, then, hey, that could be for you. There's always something going on, nightlife on the boardwalks, walking down the beach. There's always businesses and live concerts all the time. Brian, obviously, because I live inland a little bit, you know, Brian's always sending us stuff saying, like, look at the country concert going on, all this cool stuff. So it, there's a lot going on in St. Petersburg, a lot of cool, a lot of great community, a lot going on. I think it's something to definitely consider, especially if you look at the greater Tampa area, but the budget's definitely going to be a lot more condos and things like that. St. Petersburg does have single family homes, but again, it's going to be higher price range budget. Now, moving on to number four, we have Miami. Now, Miami is Miami. I got kids. It ain't for me. But if you're down to party and you want to live that life and you have that budget, then hey, Miami is the place. I, I think it is, some people call it the LA of the East Coast. I think LA is trash. So Miami is awesome. If you like to go there and do those kind of things, again, it has everything, major sports. It's like anything a major city would have. It's Miami, right? Clubs, partying, business opportunities, but it is expensive. 
There are stuff going on there. But, you know, again, if that's not for you, there's a whole other state to do. So Miami, honestly, if you're watching this video and you already got excited about me talking about all the stuff Miami has like to offer here, you're probably meant to go to Miami. For me, I'm like, ugh, pass. Not for me. Now, moving on to number three in the list, we have Jacksonville. So this is where Ed is currently stationed. He's still active duty Navy, which is crazy. He does all the stuff for you guys as well while being active duty Navy. But obviously, Jacksonville. So, man, I don't know. He loves Jacksonville a lot. Me, not a fan. But Jacksonville does have a charm. I hear it has a great food scene. Um, there's a lot going on there. Obviously, it has beaches and things like that. Um, there are a lot of parts of Jacksonville that tend to be very high in crime. It is probably one of the most affordable big cities on this list. Um, and for some reason, you're a Jaguars fan. Actually, cool fact I learned about the Jaguar Stadium: if you own a boat, I don't know how the I don't know what the process is to get into it. But apparently, if you own a boat, you can actually drive your boat up to the Jaguar Stadium, park it, and go watch the game. Instead of going back to your car, go back to your boat, head on with your life. That's pretty freaking cool. I mean, you gotta admit. Jacksonville has a lot of great parts to it, but you have to be aware if you are going there, you have to be really mindful of like what areas are good and bad, which is why you should reach out to us because we can help walk you through that process, especially if you've never lived there before. Or maybe you were stationed in NAS Jacksonville, but you're like, you need a little bit of support along that process. So be mindful of that. Now, Jacksonville, again, it's one of the most affordable places on this list. I mean, I'm always getting amazed by some of the decent homes there that are not that expensive. All these other cities, honestly, are really expensive. So be aware that it is more affordable, but be careful because it's really easy. I and mean, there's even times where, you know, we had clients looking in Jacksonville and I'm like, hey, I sent them you know, to my partner, Ed, and be like, hey, man, look at this place. It looks pretty good for them. And then you just found back, dude, it's like, they're not trying to put bars on the windows and get shot every day. I'm like, all right, my bad, my bad. I didn't know it was that bad. So <laughs> it's not, it's not like that. Every, every city, obviously, any city is going to have bad areas. That's why you got to make sure you know what you're doing or reach out to people like us who can help walk you through that process. You know, be mindful of that. But that Jacksonville, again, people either love it or hate it. I don't get, I don't think it's the worst city. It's definitely one of my higher ranking ones for me personally on the list. But, you know, it's not for everyone. So be aware of that. Now, or now here's number two is where I live, Orlando. I don't know if Orlando is a place I would stay forever. I do like Tampa. But Orlando is one of those locations that... I mean, if you have family, it's awesome. Now, it gets very touristy. Not a fan of that. So I'm not a huge fan of the fact that it gets really not a huge people person at all. But having my wife and kids, you know, it is nice to have all the amenities and things like that. I can drive north, go hunting if I really wanted to. Um, fishing galore. You know, it's more protected from hurricanes. Uh, we actually went through the process of building a house here. It's not the most unaffordable place, but it's not the cheapest on this list by any means. The cool thing is, is like North Orlando, you can really get tucked away, away from the tourism. People don't go up that way that much. So that's where you really, really want to live. You want to be permanent all the time. Um, but obviously we live along the floor heading towards Tampa, um, which is definitely blowing up, but it gets very tourist heavy. So that's one down for Orlando, a lot of tourists. Now, most of these cities on this list are going to be really tourist heavy. Um, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, maybe hit and miss there. Not so much there at Gainesville as well. But when you got when you had a close coastal area or a high tourism area, it's going to be busy during the winter season for sure. Now, heading into number one, which this has always been ranking on every single list you're going to find, Tampa is usually on that list. So, Tampa. Now, we talked about St. Petersburg, Clearwater. Again, greater Tampa area on the coastline. So Tampa extends, you know, pretty, it's a really big city. Now, Tampa is definitely getting expensive. There are places where you can find a f more affordable homes. Um, but I will tell you, I do love Tampa. But the time we moved here, the, it was just a lot of our budgets. We were building a home, looking for lots, lots in Tampa, a little more expensive. So we went through that struggle. But Tampa, I mean, I really do love Tampa. I love the downtown scene. The beaches are awesome. Uh, you got sports teams. Like, if you're like me, I love hockey and football, and it's got both. So, Tampa is its a clear reason why it's the number one city. I mean, there's always stuff going on. And if you really have a family and you want to head somewhere for the for the weekend, head over to Orlando, hit some deep parks. So like, Tampa is just an amazing, great location. Now, I will tell you where I think Orlando beats a lot of these cities, maybe not Miami, Miami and Fort Lauderdale, but definitely all the other ones, is Orlando being such a tourist city. 
it's a lot cheaper to get flights. So if you're in a situation where you're going to be paying for a lot of flights or your family's going to be visiting you a lot in the state, I think Orlando is a clear winner in that fact because most of these cities, you have to fly to Orlando to go to other places. Not always. Depends where you're going, of course. But that's a clear winner I have about Orlando is, I mean, I've seen I've seen one-way tickets for 300 bucks sometimes. Even now, in this crazy economy, right? I think that can be a clear winner in that aspect. So be mindful. It's not just about where you live. It's also about your budget. What do you do for work? What are you trying to do? Everything in between. Now, this might be you know a big list, but there are so many more cities in Florida: Naples, Cape Coral, like I, Saint Augustine. Like I could go on forever. And each one of these areas is so special. My big thing I tell everyone who's, especially you guys as veterans who are coming to this state, is look. Find the location that best fits you. Maybe it, maybe it means you're not buying a home right away. Maybe it means you're renting. But find a location and then travel. And me and my family continue to travel the state. It's a big state. There are so many areas to see and do that you need to you need to travel. You need to do all of them because it's really without going there in person, it's it's hard to do it justice. Now me and the team we can help you all so much, right? But. There's also this, the state is just, it's so different and unique and there's a lot going on. And there's also a lot of freedom too. It's also a good thing to have. But if you're making the move to Florida or you're in, even in the process of just thinking you might do it, well, there's never popping low. So how you can get a hold of me and the team. Obviously here at Agents of the Armed Forces, our sole job is helping veterans like yourself move or PCS to this great state, but doing so in a way that makes sure that you make more money in the long run and also you live a happy life when you get here because that's what's most important because if you don't do something right or you make a mistake it can just ruin everything and you're going to hate your experience in here and this day has so many good things to offer we want to make sure you get here and live the best life you possibly can live so hope you got value in this video again reach out to us if there's anything we could possibly do for you in terms of buying a home i don't care if you're renting what it does not matter reach out to us as real estate agents our sole job is to make sure we give you everything we can do especially for that veteran community because so everyone says that they love veterans but very few have actually pcs or or even understand the lingo and what they can do with their va loan so hope you got value in this video look forward to seeing you in the next one